What's going on, everybody? Mark Conway with the Midwest Horror Network. Thank you so much for clicking on this link for the Nightmares podcast. If you do want to hear just the audio version of this podcast, click the Spotify link below. Welcome to the Nightmares podcast, everyone, where we talk about horror movies, TV shows, comics, video games, everything horror related. You name it, we'll talk about it. I'm Brandon, and with me today are... I'm Mark Conway. American Zacco. And today we are talking about one of my favorite horror horror comedy TV shows, Scream Queens. I've been a fan of this one since it first aired, and I just finished taking Zach and Mark through the first season. So we're going to get their thoughts about what it was like going through season one for the first time. So just as a little general synopsis of this show... Uh, this show is is a hundred percent pure unadulterated satire. Uh, it is in the same vein as Cabin in the Woods and uh, Scream, in being that very very satire with a nice healthy dose of Animal House. Uh, this particular uh, story takes place on a college campus where two um, a sorority and a fraternity are both involved in a deadly situation with a mass killer and a red devil costume running around murdering people. Uh, these have to be one of the, some of the worst human beings on the face of the earth that are members of these sororities and fraternities. But as somebody said about Seinfeld, I'm going to say about this, you don't have to like them, you just have to laugh at them. Um, and there are a lot of fucking funny moments in this show. I, well, first of all, I, I, I recommend this show. This show was fun. The show was exactly what I wanted it to be when Bran was describing it to me. There's one moment in particular that completely sold me on the show. Brandon uh, specifically told me about this scene that I had to stick around for. Was it the scene that I mentioned on one of our previous podcasts? I don't remember. It was the Backstreet Boys scene. It was the Backstreet Boys scene. scene. That was uh, when... Uh, Of course, anything with the Backstreet Boys getting involved, Mark's going to be like, Oh my God, yes! (laughs) I mean, well, you know, know, well, I'm a fan. But but it just really you're a fan. It's just how the scene went down was amazing. <laughs> I just want to point out there's a character in this show that is the pure unadulterated combination of me and Mark, Chad Redwell, I believe the third. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they um uh, he is if Zach and me were the same person and went to a, and went and was a president joined a fraternity and not only that was a president of a fraternity and incredibly wealthy. Um, the uh, he is probably the runaway star of the whole show. He <laughs> he owns every single scene. So take every stereotype about a frat boy. Um, and rich it, frat boy. Uh, very specific, douchey, rich frat boy. Um, uh, and combine it with a person who gets sexually hara- aroused by murder and by death. And then you get Dude, Chad. gets sexually aroused by almost anything. Pretty much Murdering anything. death is just like the tip. Like, that that's his go-to thing. <laughs> is it his go-to thing or is it just one more thing? I no, this is this seems like his big thing. Like, he fucking loves it. Like, anything will turn him on. He will, he'll fuck anything that moves. Dude, it's, it's, but or death doesn't and, move. It's sure, but death and murder... That's like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> I th- I'm going to go with Brandon. I think this is just one more thing. And this... it just happened to be at the forefront because of what was going on. Look, yeah. guys, as somebody who comes from this type of field, when you get turned on by that, it- it- it's nothing beats it. <laughs> Blood, guts, and gore are the best turn on for a guy who's into that shit. I- I'm telling you. Like, if a woman... Doesn't matter what the hell she looks like. Essentially, if she comes in covered in blood, you're gonna want her. <laughs> I think that's like a the girl thing. from Thirteen Ghosts. She was my dream girl for years. <laughs> I, I think. I think this. I think this. I think this is just you, thing, Zach. Um, it's clearly a Chad Radwell thing. Oh, it's definitely a Chad Radwell thing. And it's also clearly a me and you thing at this point too. No, I think that's a Chad side of the personality. <laughs> Although, yes, I, I'm gonna go with one more thing because. Because Chanel, who is the lead uh, sorority character played by Emma Roberts, mm-hmm. yes. um, who's po- arguably one of the worst human beings on the face of the earth, um, and a character that is so dumb and so brilliant at the same time, it is truly mind-boggling. But the, <laughs> but it really is fucking mind-boggling. Uh, and she ro- walks into him in so many crazy situations... Literally walks in and him spooning 
with with his gay roommate who it, wasn't really gay. It, it turns out wasn't really gay. Pretending Which, uh, to be gay. Uh, maybe we should just point out we are going full on spoilers. Yeah, this there's absolutely no way we can not talk yeah. about this. Um, there's a lot of weird scenarios that happen in this show. The uh, and then and then the next time she runs in, he's with a goat. <laughs> So, I think this is just one more thing. <laughs> He's such a funny fucking character. Okay, so... Like I, w- I said, anything that moves, he will fuck it. All right, I want to talk about my, my, my favorite scene in the whole show is... A, everyone all danced around it, but essentially, the Red Devil Killer is on the loose and causing mayhem. So, the Dickie Dollar Scholars get together. That is the name of their fraternity. The um, It's, it's a great name. The um, uh, all get together and decide that they're gonna arm themselves with baseball bats and walk down the street and try Calling to hunt out down. the red devil. They call it, he Chad called it ghetto code. It's totally a real thing, according to him. <laughs> the um, uh, sure, uh, and he they all go out into the middle of the street and enough smoke to make the director of a Goosebumps episode jealous. And the and then they begin to call out the Red Devil while um, Backstreet Boys um, uh, um, Backstreet's back plays in the background while they destroy a random car and then get into a baseball bat fight with two of the Red Devils who both come armed with chainsaws, which is a really bad idea considering they only have baseball bats. Yeah, every single time one of the Dicky Dollar Scholars attacks. Red, one of the Red Devils will just cut the baseball in half with a chainsaw. It's like, attack, baseball's destroyed. Attack, baseball's destroyed. Attack, baseball's destroyed. I, I mean, it, you know, it again, wasn't a good plan, but it was a plan. Well, these people aren't necessarily the smartest people in the world. And again, I go back to this. Like, they're so brilliant and so stupid at the same time. It truly, it hurts my head. The um, uh, funny enough, I think the Chanel's are a lot smarter than they are. Yeah. Sure, sure. No, I'll give you that. I'll definitely give you that. The um, uh, so th- there's a lot of good stuff. It, it, it's it's a, um, I mean, essentially, as the series goes on, you figure out that there's a Red Devil killer that, like I said before, that is hunting down everybody that's involved with the sorority, um, and then pretty much anybody that gets in their way or you know isn't a bystander of the situation. Um, uh, you felt, figure out a little bit more into the mystery. Brandon already gave the spoiler that there were two kids that were born in the bathtub upstairs back in the early 90s. And those two kids end up growing up to be the killers of the situations. So really, I mean, so the funny thing is that is that this had a lot of really good humor and great satire. But it actually also had a really good story. And it did it keep my interest in keep the the suspense going you know i also chose not to start making guesses on purpose um because i wanted to be surprised and and for the most part i was it didn't it it made sense why it was the way that it turned out to be but i thought this was a really fucking fun show i'll agree yeah um so it does the show the opening scene of the show does start out in 1995 and it starts out at a party at the main sorority that we take place in nineteen. That the story takes place in nineteen. Is it Kappa Kappa Tau? Yeah, Kappa Kappa, Kappa, Kappa Tau. What Kappa, a Kappa, fucking Kappa, name! Kappa Kappa Tau. Yeah, um, that name makes me want to punch. Something. And there's a girl in a bathtub who is giving birth, and pretty much her sorority sisters basically just let her give birth and let her die. Which leads to a cover-up, which is kind of what is the centerpiece of the murders happening in the present day, or at that time, 2015 murders. Yes, indeed. Uh, and then, of course, and it, it is like a basic setup for a slasher story, but what really elevates this are the characters. Oh, yeah. And really just a basic slasher story about the great characters. Uh, you have Jamie Lee Curtis in there as the Dean of Students. Um, Coming back as a very sexually aggressive dean of students. Emphasis on the aggressive. The very, very, very much very. so. You have Nisi Nash from Reno 911 fame. Yes. As, she is hilarious. She is a security guard who is hired to keep the sorority safe. She's basically the same character that she is in Reno 911. That, you know, there, there's not much of a difference between her with the character she plays here. I, and I have a question. Is she like Ryan Reynolds, where she essentially plays the same character in everything she's in? 
Uh, in this case, yes. Oh um, my! Okay. In this case, yes. Yeah. Because I feel like I've seen her in a few things before. I just can't remember what specifically. But <laughs> me and Wes were talking the other day. It's like, yeah, Ryan Reynolds just plays Ryan Reynolds. In, no, I'm sorry. Ryan Reynolds just plays Deadpool and everything he's in and or, has been in. Or, or does Deadpool play Ryan Reynolds? See, that's the real question. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the um. Cue uh, the uh, Inception theme. Indeed. Jesus Christ. The I know, right? The um uh, you also the funny thing is that you um you're not always the biggest fan of satire and this is just dripping with satire and you actually had a pretty damn good time with this. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You no, liar. I didn't. You have no proof. You quoted the Dickie Dollar before we started this podcast. You have no proof of this. The uh, so anyway, what was your favorite part, Zach? I don't know. That's a good question. The, there were a lot of good stuff. There's, There's a lot of funny shit in this film or <laughs> show. Sorry. The um, uh, the, um this is just the first season, by the way. Yeah. I know. Why uh, don't you? It's kind have, of an anthology, right? Uh, semi uh, takes place. Like season two does take place in a different location, and there are a lot of new characters, but there are some characters who do carry over. Okay. Okay, rock and roll. The um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. You said John Stamos is in the next one, so yep. And there are a few be... other surprise castings in it as well. Um, which I wouldn't have brought up John Stamos being in it if it wasn't for the fact that he was in a commercial on Hulu like the last five episodes that we've watched. It's it's letting us know, hey, you better watch season two. Hey, yeah. you better watch yeah, no season shit. two. <laughs> which I mean, uh, I, I like season two. Like I think the ratings went down for season two, but I think the rev- I think the reviews might have been consistent quality with season one. Okay, but I will say that season two. Like season one is like a hyper reality, like it's like a hyper version of real life. Whereas season two just throws all sense of real life out the window, and it is glorious. Nice, nice, nice. I'm definitely in for that. Yeah, I really don't know what my favorite moment is. The uh, there's I mean, there, there's a lot of good moments, but you know now that I'm on the spot, I'm like, wow, what the. F- fuck actually happened in the show a lot happened right, in the what, show. what about this uh, this might be a little easier favorite characters other than chad like we all know oh, i was about to say man. other than chad oh, 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 crap oh, oh, we, we already talked about chad we no, all without like a shadow chad. of a doubt chad is my favorite but character chad is not the only character in here and actually in re-watching it this time as much as i like chad and it's like he is my favorite character as well i was surprised at how little he was actually in it like he, yeah like he that is how that's that's just how much he takes over the scenes that he's in. No, like absolutely, any scene he's in, he steals yeah. the show. Because there are episodes, shadow of a doubt. Because there are episodes where he's only in it for like one scene. All right, I guess my all right. My second favorite character, is Chanel number three, the one with the earmuffs. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. three, right? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Her. Yeah, yeah, she would be my second favorite. Yeah, that's definitely. Any reason or, why? Um, she's just kind of dark, morbid, and just. Dude. She's probably, like, the most serious one out of all of them, and she's probably the only one I could tolerate out of all of them. Do you know who that actress is? Yeah, that's Carrie Fisher's yeah. daughter. That's, that's, well, that's not shocking why, why he likes her. Rip Carrie! The, um, uh, um, uh, dude, I, I actually gotta say, like, I don't like her as a character, but I enjoy watching her. This is the original Chanel. The, um, uh, The original Chanel, she's... Like, she's a terrible human being, but I enjoy watching horrible things happen to her. The, um, uh, and... and I guess she would probably be my third. Okay. The, uh, with with the second, um, uh, the second is the uh, Chanel number three. Oh, yeah, Chanel number three absolutely would be my second favorite. Because, like I said, she's, you know, she's the least terrible of the bunch. She's, for the most part, serious. And... She's very deadpan. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I guess that just feels relatable to a degree. You know what, and I actually really like Zayde and the main girl. Cause it, it, Zayde and the main girl are good characters too, but they're very simple, I guess. But the, that's what you, you needed for it, because you needed some sense of... of, of they're of, the anchor. Sh- yeah. Correct, thank you. You don't you. have sure. them and none of the rest works. Like, they provide contrast to... The craziness. Yeah. yeah. The um And I, and actually, I like Zayde because Zayde is... Crazy, you know, not crazy, but snarky, but like a real person. Like the Chanel's are not like the Chanel's are are not the even the real. fucking tip of the this person doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, correct. Like yeah. they're the most exaggerated versions, but at least Zayde okay. Zayde is like can be eccentric and like be snarky, but she's you, still if a you fucking Zayde is a human. Yes, you you could probably think of somebody in your life who you could relate to Zayde. Yeah, Whereas absolutely. The 100%. Chanel's are just so exaggerated what rich people are or maybe not exaggerations 
I mean, they certainly. I don't know be. that for sure. Okay, I will say this: I do know some somewhat rich people, and I could kind of see it. Like, here's the thing: I've never been to a frat. I've never been to a fraternity before, so I don't know if these people actually do exist. I'm not gonna say they don't because you know what? I'm sure somewhere, if you look hard enough, you could find these fucking people. Dude, the ones that I hung out with, man, like they were not from wealthy families. Like yeah. that's the big thing. Like I mean, like the ones if I went to. If you come was... from wealth, I do believe that these people probably do exist. It's. I mean, sure. Honestly, it's a version. Yeah. Maybe not as comedically. Because I've also worked with wealthy people, and it's just like you could tell. It's just like, all right, you need to shut the fuck up. Sometimes. Yeah, there's that. You know something funny? The only actual Chanel. That I that I I've seen in real life is Chanel number two, the um uh, the uh, you know um, I'm glad I haven't met anybody like her because she's just fucking annoying. Well, she's very annoying. Wait, was number two the one that uh got at? She's the one that got murdered at Ariana Grande. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Then I'm thinking of Chanel number four. Um, was that four or five? There was no four. No, okay, then the it's four left before the story even began. Oh, okay, okay so, then, then it's then it's the one who who um who was number the girl. five. She was a girl from Zombieland. Yes. Number five. Number, number five. five. There's number five? Okay. Yeah. yeah, the, um, uh, yeah, at least, like, the, see, I've seen girls like that, the, the, the so desperate to fit in to the point of lunacy. Like, that's, like, that I know well. I've seen that to a small degree, like, the starting stages of it, but it was quickly put in its fucking place. I, I've, I, but I, yeah. I, I get what you're saying, but, but yeah, no, I've definitely seen that, the, the, like, the ones that so desperately that, want it. Um, you know, it, it was hilarious because it's nothing, like, if they actually, instead of trying to fit themselves into one fucking box and just were themselves, they'd probably be pretty cool. But the reason why she's annoying and thus hilarious is because she's trying so hard to pretend to be something that she is clearly not. Yeah. Um, I liked her parents. (laughs) Her parents were hilarious. Dude, all their parents disowned them. (laughs) And by the end of them, all their parents disowned them. And I like her mother's line. It's like, our daughter just sucks. She sucks. (laughs) (laughs) We were planning to disown her from the moment she could talk. That 30-second flashback of just like... How the killer convinced her parents to disown her. There was like nothing to it. It's like, oh yeah, we were actually talking about this just a couple of weeks ago before you even asked us. Oh, no, no, no. The, no, it's like we were talking about this from the moment she started talking. Yeah, right. That was it. Oh my God. It's like, damn. Dude, I love it. Lovely at the very end when they're, when Chanel's on trial and, and the judge was, was like, was like, yeah, they're disowning you. And they're, and they're suing you for running your Range Rover through their living room. He <laughs> didn't want to walk up the driveway. It was a really long Drive oh my god, you're such a terrible person. The, oh, um, my, oh, it's so much well, damn fun. Let, okay, let, let's uh, back up a little bit. Okay. Um, sort of early on in the season. So, when I first... I, I watched this as it was airing. Oh, and, so you watched this the old school way. Yeah, and I wasn't like a late adopter into the season. It wasn't like I heard from people I was good. It was I watched it the night the first episode aired, and... I watched it every week since, or not necessarily aired, but went like, I watched it on um, Fox's streaming at the time. Okay. Because uh, I was just at my in my first apartment, so I didn't have cable or anything like that. Yeah. There's a, there's so it's something like special about about doing that, like you yeah. know, like actually, like I did that with Sons of Anarchy, like actually watching it from week to week, yeah. and like and really in like anticipating the next episode. I have done something like that in years i mean neither have i i mean, yeah. I mean sons of anarchy en- ended like five years ago and it's no but i'm saying like it's been a good 10 years since probably, i've done something like probably that. same for me the- so yeah pretty much the day after i would go up on streaming and so i'd watch it then week to week nice. um in the first episode which the the premiere was actually the first two episodes okay and you guys kind of got a taste of that when we started because i want to show you the first couple episodes and hulu much like how fox did it when it first aired combines the first two episodes into one and so i kind of consider that whole hour and a half as one episode yeah so the first half of that episode i thought was a little awkward at first I and mean, but let's face it what pilot comes out of the gate completely fully formed yeah and everything evil dead and so i do think combining it with its second episode was a good choice because i thought it was a huge improvement from episode one to episode two within that hour and a half block sure and so i kind of left it thinking this is kind of guilty pleasure but i enjoy watching it and that's how i felt for like the first handful of weeks and then it got to 
the Halloween two-parter, specifically the second part, the one with the shining maze. Yeah, that was pretty dope. And that's where I finally went, no, I legitimately enjoy this. The um, uh, And, and the- so, but there was the episode before the shining maze with Chanel Ween. Oh, that was painful and so accurate. It's the one that, that Zach actually, I think, said a couple times, like, I hate society. Which, this was based off of Taylor Swift's Swiftmas. Oh, yeah, that was, was that, a thing? Yes, that was a thing. The um, Mark, uh, you probably know more about the specifics of that better than I do if you want to head it, this. It, it's, funny enough, it's exactly what happens in the fucking episode. Like, they literally, like, gives fans presents and then they open it on, you know, on Instagram or whatever social media and then post it up and say thank you. Um, I'm not... Dude, like, like this... You know what? I think I get it now. Fucking Chanel is Taylor Swift. She's a combination of, like, 20 different stuff. Either way, it just makes me hate her even more. The, uh, but that's the reason why you like watching it. Because you hate her. <laughs> the um uh, dude i it's it's so like and now that i'm reflecting on it like this is so almost painfully on the nose satire to the point where like i go wow i can't believe this is i'm watching this it's almost like it's almost like you want to watch like pop culture news or, or like tmz on one on one screen and then watch this show on another screen and see if you can like compare and contrast the two because it gets painfully close the um, especially like some of the shit that Dean Munch says, um, uh, Jer- Jamie Lee Curtis's character, I I went wow, holy shit, the um, uh, but yeah, no, no, that that was definitely a good episode. You know, what, actually, comedy. I'm switching my third favorite. Dean Munch was actually really Jamie Lee Curtis was fucking great in the yeah. show. The uh, it was good to see her in something horror related again. The uh, and and also too, by the way, that was an I that was actually my favorite ending of one of the episodes is when she took on all three of the uh, of the killers in her house. That was hilarious. That was awesome hilarious. Dude, what, oh, what, what did the third person come in as? What, the, uh, what was the political the figure? Super, she... One of the Supreme Court justices. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, she, she knew the mask right away. She's just like, Supreme Court justice, whatever the fuck your name is? Really? <laughs> she even called it out. I'm like, what, what the fuck? The, uh, we've stepped. That in, was hilarious. We've stepped into La La Land. The um, <laughs> uh, the uh, and then um, the main character's dad uh, also is there as well. Uh, he's Wes. No, no, he... no, no. That, that, that's his name. Oh, is that his actual oh wait, name? really? Yeah. That oh is, wow. <laughs> well, well, now it's now. Well, now it's undeniable. Yeah, I, I wasn't comparing him to Wes. I, I'm saying the character's name is Wes. Uh, that that's something. that's kind of funny. That's something. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he is an extremely overprotective parent. So he so he uh, basically gets a job uh, teaching film theory, uh, which he shows like what Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, and Children of the Corn, and then The Exorcist. We don't see anything of that in the whole second half of the season. Yeah. Which oh is, yeah, because they shut down the campus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I was, was gonna nice. say, don't forget the school closed. It's hard. You know, like as much activity that went down while they're all you know all still doing shit. And everything else like it doesn't even seem like the school was shut down yeah, don't but I forget, most of it takes place in the uh sorority what, house yeah yeah how, that is true that yeah the sorority true. house or the frat house or whatever the fuck you want to call it the dicky dollar scholars place yeah that too but that's only on occasion you know the sorority house is really the main setting of the uh, whole yeah show. no 100 yeah. percent the um yeah the dad's always there i guess he's an overprotective dad like almost to a uncomfortable level there's oh. a few moments but where they make But you understand why he's that way. Oh, yeah. But there's a when, few looks he gives a, where it's yeah. just a little awkward, like, mm, that's a little weird. Because you do have to create suspicion. He could be the killer. Like, you got to create those red herrings there to mm, make a good mystery. I disagree, but okay. I mean, when hell, I suspected the, uh, I suspected her for a while. Um, even the main actress, um, uh, the main character. I'm like, yeah, it could happen. Yeah, the, um, they do do a very good job at setting up. It literally could be anybody, anybody especially yeah. since they very early on show that there is more than one killer. Yep. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad they did that because it set it, it set it up. Even if they found out who you know, and then especially when they even involved a third person when and that whole Dean Munch fight, I'm like, this is great because even if you still you find out who one of the killers is which by the way you find out pretty you know early pretty early on. on who two of them are 
Um, or, okay, at least, one, at least one, you find one, out one pretty one early. One of them you on. find out pretty early. One of them you find out kind of in the maybe middle. about in the middle, but it's pretty easy to figure out that that's who it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it, it's they, they give you the clue you need, and it's like right there. But then it's maybe a couple episodes later where they just come out and say, "Yeah, it's this person." But then the third killer they leave right up until pretty much the very end all right a full a full-on spoiler alert because i i feel like we're still dancing around it so yeah and it's this, this show has this show has been around for five years it's been canceled for a few years um imagine at, we're the reason it comes back yeah at, at, at this point we're pretty much doing this discussion for fans of the show who Absolutely. just want to know what we thought of it so 110 percent. yeah even though we've had a couple spoilers at this point we didn't say we're doing spoilers we're just gonna outright spoil the ending so if you have any desire to watch the show and go through the surprises like we all did and you don't want to know the ending of the season come back at another time fair enough go watch the show and then come back to where you left off if you really want to or put this podcast on mute and let it play so we still get your view (laughs) well that's if you really want to help us out i mean that is true if you want we're a very small podcast and we'll take literally all the help we can get (laughs) even if it's not on mute the um or at least press that little checkbox that says save later and come and watch us later um, so the, the first killer is identified as the, uh, the gay best friend of, of Brett. Chad. Chad. Who is one of the Jonas brothers, and, I would yep, like to point yeah, out. That is absolutely 110% correct. Man, there's so much boy band in this fucking show. There's a lot of boy band in the Mark show. Mark really loves it. The, I'm not a Jonas Brother fan, but I actually am a fan of him when he, when he's guest starred in other things. So I actually really enjoy him What else him has he this. been in? He's been a couple episodes of Hawaii Five O. He's guest starred in a couple different um, series um, that have been on. He, they had a show on Disney Channel for a while. So uh, trust a me, I know. Lot, there's a lot of. I've not seen any of the new Hawaii Five O, but there's a lot of weird, um, or at least unexpected, like directors oh, on weird. that one. Like yeah. you've got a uh, Peter Weller directed 15 episodes. RoboCop himself. RoboCop. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you got Joe Dante directed 10 episodes. Um, he's a jab. Yeah, you got Ron Underwood, Un- Ron Underwood of Tremors fame, directing four episodes. Wow. Um, Stephen Herrick of Bill and Ted and Critters, three episodes. So you got a lot of horror and sci-fi in this. The uh... yeah. Anyway, uh, so back to oh, Len Wiseman of Underworld. Wow, some he more directed horror. one. Jesus. Uh, Carl Weathers directed one. Because <laughs> why not? Carl Weathers yeah. is awesome. Carl Weathers is awesome. Anyway, uh, so he's identified as the first killer. He essentially fakes his own death, uh, which I thought was a pretty fun fun reveal, especially when he, he pulls him out. Um, uh, and then, of course... Which the fake death is revealed like right after... Isn't that happens. like episode three or It's four? like at the end of two or three. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's pretty early on, you know. Um, and how and, and they reveal that... But his fucking disguise is hilarious. They all think that he's... Um, Joaquin uh, Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. It's just the fakest beard. I think that was making fun of like when Joaquin Phoenix was doing that fake documentary about his rap hip-hop career. Oh, yeah. Wait, this was a thing? That was a thing. I do remember that. Yeah. That was ridiculous. Like the whole David Letterman thing? Yeah, he had like a really weird, awkward, rev- you know, uh, interview and like just him being a method douche. The um, okay, that's a thing. Oh, I'll send it to you later. Yeah. The um, uh, it's like I remember a lot of people thought, oh, Joaquin's career is over after that. Cut to a handful of years later, he won an Oscar for Joker, and then thanked no Was one in the crew. Uh, when? Oscar for, for for a win or nominee no, not nomination just Oscar in general did he act like that no that's actually? his first win oh he's nice. got a couple Golden Globes before but as far as Oscars go that was his first oh, fair enough yeah, whatever oh, it's not like the Oscars are worth anything it's for shit um anyway uh I actually I actually enjoyed the the reveal and then also him doing that because. I don't know, it always kept me engaged with, you know, with like the plot of the, you know, like what what's this all about? What's, you know, what's the plot of the killers? Why are they doing this? And like, he's a great way to, to, to for the audience to engage, you know, obviously you didn't know who he was talking to on the other end of the phone, but I thought it was cool. 
and then the second killer was uh, was the uh, the the girl who dated the um, Wes uh, who dated Wes uh, the girl's dad for a little bit who has a mental disorder where she still thinks it's the nineties. Um, uh, I that, don't know if that's a mental disorder. She just kind of stuck in the nineties. Well, it was her therapist told her that she suffered some trauma that make it's not that she thinks it's the nineties. It's that her personality won't Leave. exit the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, it, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. The it's basically like what Arrested Development is. Okay, how when like if a child goes through something super traumatic, they'll kind of always mentally be that age in a way. Mm, so, so it's she- kind of like that. Okay, so that makes sense. The uh, and that's super. There's a that, there's a, a metaphor for you about people being stuck in in previous decades. Hmm. The um uh, and she um uh, she was really uh, it was really interesting to watch her um uh, play with Wes and play with um uh, with the, the main girl and you know and that whole dynamic and then slowly figure out that she was the killer and actually be, remained pretty active for most of the show. As the killer and also dating her at the same time, which I thought yeah. was pretty cool. Which Gigi was played by Nassim Petrad of Saturday Night Live fame, I believe. And she's also done other things too. Like yeah. she was in a couple other things. The um, uh, This was probably the most memorable thing I saw her in. I can't remember anything else she was in, at least off the top of my head. Might have seen her in something else, but you know, I can't think of it right now. She was apparently in an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but I'm trying to remember what. Um, she's been in a few things. She was in Cooties with Elijah Wood. Oh, that okay. was a, that was a fun one. Brooklyn Nine Nine. She was in an episode of that, and she was apparently in the new Aladdin, which I did not see. I don't think anybody um, saw but it. But no, it's, Saturday Night Live is probably what she's most famous for. Fair. No, one hundred percent. The um, uh, yeah, and then um, and then obviously the show goes on. And actually, technically, there's a fourth killer. Um, uh, there's not even three. There's four. So it. Um, mm, I'd like to keep that one a surprise for anybody. Fair but enough. Then again, we did give the warning of if you haven't seen it. So yeah, Mark, if you want to say it, you can. The uh, um, uh, and what was his name? Uh, uh, the guy who was dating the main girl. I always forget his uh, his name's character. I think it was Billy. No. Or something. Or no, I, I said he was like, he had that Billy vibe. Pete. Pete. So, yeah, Pete is the, um, Pete's another character in the show that is the reporter uh, who is, um, who apparently had a... Uh, he was uh, an investigative journalist uh, working at the school. Exactly. He worked for the school. Or, or he wanted to be. Yeah. He was like a journalism student. Wanted wanted to be involved in investigative journalism. Uh, and then also, uh, Chanel had a restraining order against him because he used to stalk her. Uh, you find out later in the, you know, why, because she was a terrible person. It was pretty humiliating. Yeah, she basically said that one of my fetishes is is for you to act like a cave. Daryl Hannah from the movie Clan of the Cave Bear. I have, I don't even know what movie that is. Probably not even a real movie. It's a real movie. It is. It's, yes, okay. I will even show you the poster. Please oh do. And you'll, Either way. you'll recognize. I, it, that's so fucking gullible. Yeah, that is pretty good. That is pretty gullible. Yeah, like the, I'm like really, dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a couple times in this show where I go, okay, the um, uh, and yeah, that is pretty gullible. But you know, dude, the, the problem is, man, is when. Okay, so we're, I think the 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 group at large here, is a little different than a lot of other people. Like even most of us have seen a lot of life even before the age of 18 for most of our lives we've experienced more hardships and more you know complicated situations than most people i so but unfortunately there's a lot of people that are that age that have never really experienced any kind of the ugliness of the world like you know as people that are in suburban situations who have never been you know, you know, always thought that a lot of people were genuine, or especially dudes, you know, uh, who've never really dated anybody or know a lot about girls. Like they, they you know, there's some awful bitches out there. The um, uh, so I, I guess I, I feel for them. The um, especially being naive and not knowing, you know, not knowing that kind of stuff. And anybody yeah. can. Be but even if you weren't naive, it, it's that's a pretty humiliating thing. To oh go yeah, hundred percent. Regardless of what your background. 100%. Because it's not that, it wasn't just that she had him dress up as that. 
it was she had everybody watching as well. Yeah, that's pretty fucking awful. The um, and again, she's a bad person. <laughs> like they're all very bad people. Yeah. And um, so I mean, you know, when a bunch of them, you know, it's just disappointing that a lot more of the pledges died than than them. Um, including one girl that was very obsessed with candles. Um, yeah, know, that's some. Let's let's yeah, let's uh, transition over and talk about the um, the pledges real quick. Yeah, the ones that uh, uh, the the um, the slasher fodder. Yes, pretty much the because uh, like well yeah, I mean that that is what they were because they were what they were there for me the first half of the season and then dead. And then, yeah, um, what do you remember, Zach, the most? Oh, there was a candle one. There was Def Taylor Swift. That he was had. the first to go. Yeah. She got her head chopped off by a car lawnmower, whatever you call those things. Riding mower. Please yeah, see our fav- favorite decapitation episode. Um, uh, that was one of my favorites. Um, there was the lesbian or whatever. She predatory got her, Les. Predatory Les. Called. Yes. Uh, she got her throat slit. Those are the only ones I remember. I and mean, there was Hester, neck brace girl. Well, she's Later actually, on, Chanel number six. Well, she's more actually more of a main character than she is she, just one yeah. of the side characters. Well, she starts off as one of the side characters, but she becomes one of the main characters. Yeah, but so did like Zayde and all that, but they were clearly like more involved main mm-hmm. characters. That's why I wouldn't really call uh, Hayes, whatever the hell her name is. Hester. Hester, yeah. yeah. Uh, a just slasher fodder because she was... But she was part of that group, is what I'm saying. No, that's yeah, true. The uh, but yeah, I think there's a predatory Les, uh, um, tone deaf Taylor Swift, uh, Candle Girl, and that's it. And that's it. Like that's, it. that's that's all I remember. Yeah. There weren't that many, but uh, yeah. The um uh, the, the one the one Candle Girl though was fucking weird. The she um, lasted quite a while. I think the, she was the last uh, like fodder to die. Yeah. The um, she got murdered by candles. It really upsets me that she has more views than we do um, uh, reviewing candles. <laughs> hey, look, there's a candle community out there, all right? There's the, a community for everything, Zach and Mark. There yeah, really is. It, it, apparently there is. Apparently there Maybe is. Maybe we should start a community based on Mark's hair. No. I think, I think it would get a good following. Yeah, sure it would. The, uh, I believe it would. The, uh, <laughs> so, um, and then uh, and there's definitely some cannon fodder on the, on the Dickie Dollar side. But honestly, mostly I just remember the uh, um, yeah the Dickie Dollar Scholars are all pretty much uh, uh, interchangeable. They, they they have their small little quirks, but they're not the focus of the story. Yeah, oh, the not at all. only three that mattered were, of course, um, there was Chad. Yeah. There was the one that was dating Zayde, and there Boone. was Boone. That's and then it. There Boone was, was a gay guy. And it's like who know the rest who knows their names. Like there was the one who got his arms chopped off, and he lasted a few boy, episodes, yeah. but. And then there was um, <laughs> he had hilarious the two death. that Eiffel Tower Chanel number five. <laughs> I forgot what their names were as well. Those are twins. Dodger. They Roger and Dodger. Yeah, oh. they um uh, the uh, <laughs> we share everything. You know, it would have been funnier if their names were Roger and Roger, just to make it even more confusing. Yes. Um. Uh, and also, then, Star Wars reference, dude. The uh, <laughs> Jesus. Um, wouldn't it be the first in the series. No, no one. No, it would not. Um, the uh, to the, the one guy though who had his uh, hair jumped off. That his death was fucking hilarious <laughs> when they're all climbing up the ladder. Uh, I'm like, do you not realize that this guy is fucked? <laughs> we need. There's nothing we can do, but at least pay him the respect of watching his death. <laughs> oh, this is so much more horrible than I thought it was going to be. Don't look. <laughs> Fucking Chad, man. Oh, man. Dude, Chad is... Oh, just fucking great. The, um... Uh, oh, man. And then there's his family at Thanksgiving. Oh, oh his family God. is just... Pl- the worst. Father played by Alan Thicke. Brothers Chad Michael Murray and one of the Schwarzeneggers. Yeah, yeah that's Patrick Schwarzenegger, the only one that actually looks like Arnold. And I'm pretty sure that one of... Uh, his mom has also been in a bunch of shit, too. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Oh. Um, Either way, these people were fucking terrible. Yeah. The uh, I love I love the one... The dad, Alan Thicke, came in. Like, I want to offer you $10,000. No, twenty Or $20,000. It was either twenty or $25,000. Chanel's like, but my family's rich. Sure they are, honey. The, um, <laughs> it's uh, like, holy the shit! $25,000 $25, could buy, could buy your family a, a lifetime of good stuff. Maybe buy an extra extension on your trailer park trailer. I'm like, damn, man. Jesus 
Christ. The um, uh, and then of course that's how rich people think of each other. Apparently, the, his mother was an actress from the New Heart show. The hell is New Heart? Or New Heart, the you know one of the Bob New Heart shows. Yeah. yeah, never heard of it. it. She was in a, a couple of. It was yet. a sitcom from the eighties. Oh, mm-hmm. all right. The um, and then like and then even um, uh, Chanel Number no. Three's family was awful. The uh, the TV dinner family. Yeah. They were. F- <sighs> they were just meh. The uh, they yeah. were awful, but like I said. Again, Chanel number three, she's the most normal out of all of them. And her father is Charles Manson. Well, her real father is Charles Manson. Father. Yeah. yeah. The, um... It's probably another reason why I like her, because she's got an awesome dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was funny how in the, um, the uh, finale, uh, when it was revealed that she had letters of Charlie Manson telling her to uh, kill our sorority sister, she was like, yeah, I started a pen pal thing with my biological father, and I would ask him like life advice, but he would always just respond by telling me to kill my sorority sisters. And one of them was like, "Dear beloved oh. daughter, I'm sorry I don't have any advice about yeast infections, <laughs> but have you ever tried?" But I just saw a news story about a pizza delivery guy getting a bomb strapped to him. I wish I could do that, but just because I can't, but just because I'm not able to, doesn't mean you can't. <laughs> oh my god, that is oddly specific. The uh, dude in the dude the ending trial was hilarious with the fucking lady getting up and changing it from not guilty to guilty. I want to know why the hell they put not guilty to begin with. Well, because there's actually no physical evidence that they yeah. actually committed those murders. The um, sure, but it's like here, here's the thing about juries. They interview jurors a lot. Like there are twelve jurors, but like if you get called in for jury duty, there are not just twelve people that are called in. Like they interview you guys because they need to make sure you are impartial um so like you need to like not even know about it from like the news or anything like that which makes high profile cases a pain in the ass yes so like so those 12 people up there could not have known anything about what happened prior to them being called in to be a jury on top of that there is certain evidence that they're supposed to like if something is ruled as not actual evidence they have to ignore it um like you probably like did you guys ever watch the people versus oj miniseries and you remember how they had the transcript from ironically ironically enough also ryan murphy yeah the um uh, which you probably remember the one episode where they had the one transcript from the cop and they were just like, this is going to prove that the cop was racist and all that. And yeah, then the yeah. judge pretty much redacted everything except for like two sentences. That means that jury only got those two sentences or they were supposed to, ignore, or if they did get anything other than those two sentences, they have to ignore everything that was redacted. They cannot bring anything else into that. So that's why they're also sequestered from the outside world because they can't be watching any news about the trial. Interesting. So it's So what do they do? Just store you in a hotel room or something? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Especially for a high profile case. Absolutely. You can't talk to anybody on the outside world. Um so it's like literally all you know is what is presented in that in that that sounds like a holy pain in the ass to deal with. Yeah, that's why people hate jury duty. Um, uh, the uh, but yeah, I just thought they hated it because they had to take off work and shit. No, it's it's horrible. The um, uh, yeah, if if you if you're a juror on like a super high profile case, that is going to be your life during the duration of the trial. So like, uh, those jurors for the O.J. Simpson trial, they couldn't watch the news about what was going on, so they don't get like newscaster commentary about what was presented or not presented. They just know what was in the courtroom. Um, there was also the Casey Anthony case a handful of years, maybe about 10 yeah, years ago yeah, or so now. It. And I remember a lot. And she was found not guilty. And a lot of people thought that was wrong. But what you need to remember, too, is those jurors only saw what was in the courtroom. They don't get all the commentary. They don't get oh, all wow. the Facebook posts. They literally just have what's in the courtroom. And that's why you really got to be able to build your case for your trial date. That makes sense. Exactly. Oh, so, I like that it's like that, but and, just and, don't and want to experience so it. Like, yeah, there are a lot of people who disagree with that verdict. You're allowed to disagree with it, but also you got to remember you weren't presented the same stuff in the same way that the jurors were. That's a fair point. True. The uh, um, Innocent until proven guilty. 
Yep. That's 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 the that's the idea. Um, The uh, um, so I guess the unless we already pretty much divulged who the who the final killer was. Nope. We still have one more. The uh, and that would be um, you just mentioned her name, but I I forgot it. Um, Neck neck brace. Hester. Hester. Chanel number six. Chanel number six ended up being the final. Um, uh, the, uh, the actual individual that, uh, that killed all those people and they go into a whole, pretty much like a whole breakdown in the episode about how, how she became who she was yeah. and, and then, you know, living up in the mental asylum and, you know, and, and, and growing up and being taught how to be a killer essentially. And, uh, then eventually obtaining a persona of a girl in a neck brace. She's never had any neck neck issues whatsoever. Yep. Um, but she was kind of right. Nobody ever suspects the person in the neck brace ever. Like when, like my original get, like when it came down to like those last two episodes before the actual reveal, um, like I narrowed it down to, I think Chanel number five and the show even tries to make you think it's her at that time. So they actually did a pretty good job at masking who it really was. I mean, it makes, it makes, it, it, you know, when I look back on it, it makes sense because she totally was, makes sense. She yeah. was insane. Yeah. Like, she's the one who tried. But it's, you discount her because of the pre existing neck brace issues. Like, For, she's, and she well, still no, it, acts like she still has the issue just because Chanel had her take off the neck brace doesn't mean her issues went away. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's but then like... But like, once it's revealed that, oh yeah, she faked it, it's like, oh, of course. Well, here's the thing. It's also, she's too obvious. Like, that's how the show really plays it. It's like, it's, it's, no, it's not really her. It's, it's too goddamn obvious. The, uh, you know, she she essentially... So what you're saying is it actually play, successfully played both sides of the spectrum yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's like, right off the bat, it's just like, this woman's fucking insane. She tries to, like bone chat on top of a bunch of dead bodies like you know she's definitely she even fakes pregnancy as well oh yes right she um uh um and uh, which the other chanel's uh, purposely tried to uh disprove by having her eat sushi drink booze and then do something else soft cheeses oh soft cheeses which i in hester's defense i did not know that one either nobody would know i I knew the booze i knew the sushi but i didn't know the soft cheeses that's weird wait you knew that i knew the sushi thing yeah Really? Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. The um uh, risk of salmonella. The um ah, okay. you know, they're more more susceptible to, you know, to those type of things if it's really bad sushi. The um uh, any sushi kind of sushi is just something you eat on a very rare occasion in my opinion. I, I actually fucking love sushi. Um uh, everybody who says they love sushi, I believe is lying. I no, only had I it once just, and I was kind of just, indifferent to it. I just just had it recently. I love it. The uh, but I like I like raw fish though. The um so I, I like mean, it cooked. The, and I don't like cooked fish as well. But anyway, um, yeah, she definitely, um, it makes sense. But yeah, the, there was always that thing about her having the next brace. And the, car- the the killers in this did a lot of physical activity. Yeah. And killed the people, a lot of people in very creative and interesting ways. Um, uh, you know, lawnmower, chainsaws, um, uh, the um, crossbow that matches the Red Devil outfit. I don't know where the fuck they found that crossbow that matches. It was the, the store album. that, you know, what's her name, uh, went to to frame yeah. Chanel. Oh, okay. Their uh, stand in Home Depot. Sure. The, uh, Which I'm sure. pretty sure they filmed at a Home Depot. Probably. Probably. The, um, so, yeah, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting things pointing to her. But, yeah, I want to go with Zach said, like, she was just too crazy. Yeah. And, like, oh, that's too obvious. Well, apparently, not so much. The, uh, she wanted a bone chat on top of Miss Bean's body. Look, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? You want to fuck somebody on top of some dead person, all right? Who hasn't want to do that? Me? Uh, second. You're lying. Me, uh, anyway, moving on. The, uh, so what did, uh, um, I'm going to ask you, Zach, what did you think of the reveals? I thought they were all right. Anyone in particular? <laughs> well, I mean, Boone was pretty obvious. And then, um, what's her name? Gigi, I think her name was? Yeah. Yeah. You guys were kind of surprised at her death. Yeah. Her death was surprising, but I didn't know her being one of the killers wasn't that surprising. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't expect her to get, to get clipped. I did not expect that at all. The, um, I thought, especially, uh, her head being the one at Thanksgiving dinner, um, like you, you totally know it's going to be somebody's head underneath that platter. It's just, we didn't expect it to be hers. Yeah. Well, actually, when I first saw the episode, I expected it to be hers. 
uh, because there's that earlier scene of she's having Thanksgiving with the Red Devil and, then this... and she gives him the, or Hester, her, we don't know it's Hester at the time, but she gives the Red Devil the... That um, wasn't Hester. That wasn't Hester? That was Pete. He even said it was. Okay. Like, I remember Pete saying uh, that he killed... Um, killed Boone. Boone. Yeah, to, okay. to cover up. Yeah, so Pete and, and, killed Boone. He killed one of the brothers with similar names that were Eiffel Toweling. Uh, mm-hmm. What's her name? And he killed uh, Gigi. Those okay. are three I mean, I mean, it makes sense that he would kill Gigi because he, they wouldn't have changed locations at that point. They, were, they didn't change locations. So they but I doubt there. Pete was the one that put her head on the thing. No, it was. Well, no, it was. It was? Yeah. Hmm. The, um, I don't I mean, remember that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I might be just assuming that he did that considering he... Because I don't did. believe uh, him and uh, what's-her-name were in cahoots. He just wanted to do it just to kind of get out of shit and just kind of end things. Mm-hmm. So, but so I, I can see him killing her, but I can't see him like going like uh, tormenting people by you know showing her head on a platter. Yeah, the, uh, that might because he Esther. didn't kill for revenge or anything. He killed for the situation. Yeah, that's true. A lot of that, you know, yeah. even even he said it was a couple out of defense. I'm honestly surprised. Which that, I mean, I kind of got distracted by getting my food when Pete was going through his reveals today. That's so. fine. The um, the one the one thing that surprised you know uh, yeah it surprised me because uh, I didn't think when he was about to stab Gigi and then turn it on on Boone yeah um in the hotel like I was like oh then then Gigi's probably gonna be cool I didn't ex- because he spared her life at that point I didn't think that he was gonna kill her um yeah. after that so that was shocking that was shocking to say the least how about you Brendan this is your second time seeing it third so, actually third so I mean yeah. you know how do you think about the reveals and you know um is it can you see the structure better now that you've uh, you, that you know the secrets or you know or is it just you know kind of eh, now it's that you know. still a very fun time okay even knowing because like you do try to place who is actually where at the time so it's like you're playing the game of now that i know who is who does it actually line up and that's kind of you know this is the same game that i play with scream you know who's you know among the two killer system who's pl- who's who in in what in any given situation. Yeah. So I like that. I like that. That's a cool part. And when you do go through a lot of time between viewings, like it was probably at least a year since I've watched the series. And the second time I watched it, like I wasn't really watching it. I kind of just had it on as background noise while I did other things. So yeah, in a way, this was like my second like full on paying attention viewing mm. whereas my second time I was kind of just casually viewing it okay um, so you do forget a lot of finer details as well okay you do forget some of the smaller characters who weren't around that long you do forget a lot of the funnier lines as well they're just kind of like throw away not necessarily throw away lines but they're not like you, you forget the lines. smaller moments like you remember the big moments you you remember the structure as a whole but you forget like how it's all tied together in the finer details yeah no 100 percent. the um yeah this i mean this is a really really fun series i mean i, I actually enjoyed watching it enjoyed laughing at it and once again brandon you you know you win on the recommendation count Thank you. You're slowly redeeming yourself against uh, against uh, Terrorvision. Fucking Terrorvision. The uh, you're slowly getting your way back. Terrorvision is so much better the second viewing. I swear. The uh, you too, say that too bad I'll never watch it again. That was my experience. I didn't like it the first time I saw it either. The uh, too bad I'll never watch it again. I'm with Mark. You say that we have a higher chance of watching Maximum Overdrive again than we do watching Terrorvision. Don't again. say things that you can't take back, Zach. You know damn well it's true. These, I never want to see that movie again. Well, we're going to. I don't know when. I don't know how, but we're going Just to. Just as much as is Brandon never wants to acknowledge Jeepers Creepers three. <laughs> What's Jeepers Creepers three? Exactly. Uh, you're the do, one who wrote a review on it. Do we? <laughs> we actually have documented proof that you, that you that you got existence. You you. You clarified that Jeepers Creepers 3 does in fact exist because you wrote a negative review on it. That is documented proof that you in fact believe that Jeepers Creepers 3 is a reality. No, it isn't. Liar. Produce it. <laughs> Zach's looking Give for it right now. And we will post it to the Midwest or, or uh, Facebook. The um, uh, Anyway, I'm definitely going to uh, get that t-shirt designed. Uh, yeah, I'm a Jeepers Creepers 3 denier. <laughs> That works. That definitely works. 
So, so um, I'm actually just good with, I don't really have necessarily a question on the podcast, so I'd rather just do final thoughts. Yeah, let's do some final thoughts. But before that, do you guys have any expectations for season two? Um, I hope it continues um, being entertaining. Like, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like, I don't want it to lose its flair. And its flair is is being really good at satire, mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, and and making me laugh, and then being an enjoyable, you know, somewhat of an enjoyable mystery. Like I did enjoy the mystery aspect of it, and trying to figure out what was next. Like that's fun for me. So you know, I hope it continues that tradition. So that's the only expectation I have. All right, Zach. I really want to see Chanel number three kill somebody. I I don't know if you'll get that, but that's okay. I'm trying to remember. We'll have to wait. Even if I did remember, I wouldn't tell you for spoilers. I was going to say, if you tell me right now, I will kill you. The uh, Well, then let's not that have that happen. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do another podcast review for season two? And yeah, yeah, we're not. We're not. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, We can definitely do that. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my final thoughts are pretty much what I just said. It is still a fun show to watch on repeat viewings. Um, I highly recommend it. It is one of my favorite TV shows the last 10 years. I was very sad when it got canceled. Um, I do think they could have kept going, especially since season two, I do believe kind of, if there was going to be a season three, the ending of season two kind of gives you a hint at what the setting would have been. And I would have loved to see Scream Queens take on that particular that particular setting nice um as far as the ryan murphy shows go i think this is infinitely better than american horror story i agree a hundred percent american horror story does have its high points but no it doesn't i I do like the first three seasons in varying in varied terms of quality everything after that's kind of eh. um but unlike even the better seasons of American Horror Story, I've always felt more compelled to watch Scream Queens again than I have had the feeling to watch the better seasons of American Horror Story again. And I mean, uh, then there's also American Crime Story, which I only saw People vs. O.J. Simpson, which was really good, and I recommend that. Um, which actually, that was written by the writers of Ed Wood, Man on the Moon, and People vs. Larry Flint. That is interesting. Yeah. Nice. They do very good jobs with um, true life stories. Oh, and a Dolomite is my name with Eddie Murphy nice. last year. Um, nice. But yeah, uh, Scream Queens, very good show. I wish it got season three. And if American Horror Story really wants to redeem itself in my eyes, they will make the final season of American Horror Story the third season of Scream Queens. It already shares quite a few cast members. I believe they can do it. Yeah, I believe that. Um, I, the show is clearly better act, than the other. Yeah, and actually to get like Scream Queens with the less, um, the, the more mature rating of an FX show, that would be, would that be too much? I don't know. I don't know. I like that. I, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I'd, I'd still watch if they bring Scream Queens into the American Horror Story universe. I'm in. Yeah. The, uh, I think that the show start with really good writing. Yep. And this has fantastic writing, and I think that with phenomenal casting complements to everything that else that goes into the show. Um, I think that it has, you know, great writing, great cast, really enjoyable story. The, um, the it's and how it's executed is pretty damn good. Um, you, you have to like this type of stuff, though. You have to like you have to like horror. You have to like satire. And and for for that you know better you have to have an understanding of horror movies and satire and pop culture in order to really appreciate. I mean you can appreciate it and have fun with it, but like you won't you, you it'll go into overdrive of appreciation if you know and have a basis of knowledge of these things. So they do go in a lot of detail about horror movies and about tropes and about other things and making fun of pop culture and modern day satire. So it really, really works on that point, which is a lot of fucking fun. Um, so I, I, rec- I recommend it. The um, I really do. I think it's great. I think it's a great show. Squirrels.
what else is new? Um, I, the uh, so um, so Brandon closes out. Yep. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Nightmares Podcast. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can listen to us wherever podcasts are available. <laughs> uh, be sure to also look us up on all of our social media, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Slasher. And of course, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and stab that like button and smash that subscribe. And then click that little dingy bell so you can be notified about every time we uh, put post new content. And then also, if you're listening to this on Spotify or any other podcasting form, please press that follow button so you can uh, be notified every time we put up new content on those as well. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next episode of the Nightmares Podcast. <laughs>